We call the NOAC WPCA regular meeting of Monday, September 16th to order. There is a quorum present. It is 5.31 p.m. Item number two, public input. Are there any members of the public uh, present and wishing to speak? No, there are not. Item number three, approval of the meeting minutes for the WPCA meeting held on July 15th, 2024. So moved. By Mr. Ignari, any comments, corrections, suggestions, edits? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, we also find Ignari, Freyer, Manella, and Smith passes unanimously. Thank you. It is 532. Item number four, introduction of Trevor Steeprock, Veolia Project Manager. Hello, uh, my name is Trevor. Uh, go ahead, Trevor. Uh, what's up? Dave, you wanna go? No, <laughs> I was, that's okay. Uh, and so I, I did just wanna lead in uh, and introduce Trevor to the, to the team here. Um, Trevor has uh, recently been been uh, promoted to the P uh, Project Manager position for NOWAC. Um, Trevor's father, Ed Steeprock, has been involved over the past several months since Matt left with the project. So this is a natural extension for us and we're very happy to have Trevor aboard. Uh, he's a known entity. He's worked uh, closely in our Danbury project for, for quite some time and we're uh, we're thrilled to have him aboard. So wanted to welcome him and go ahead, Trevor. I now allow you to, <laughs> to say a few words for yourself. <laughs> oh, hello. Um, so my name is Trevor Steeprock. Um, I hold a bachelor's of science in chemistry and environmental science and a Connecticut grade four wastewater operators license. Um, as Dave spoke, I, I recently was at our Danbury facility for a little under 10 years and, and I was the assistant manager there before I left um, to come here just recently. Um, so I'm super excited to come on board and bring a lot of what I know and learn some new stuff down here and uh, looking forward to a good partnership with the, the city. Congratulations, welcome aboard. Um, welcome. Very Thank you. Very proud class four. Anybody else? I did want to share some other news, exciting news that we have. Um, uh, knowing that Trevor's our, our class four, we we recently had Ross uh, pass his class three certification as well. So now we're fully covered on the licensing side of things with a, a four and a three. And I wanted to extend uh, my congratulations <laughs> on to Ross. He worked very, very hard to get, uh, to get that done. So. Congratulations, Thanks, to Ross. Too. Thank you, guys. Congrats. Thank you, everyone. Congratulations, Congratulations, Ross. Well done. Yeah. Good deal. Um, so, Chairman, I just want to make a comment of it. Uh, I know you guys have been very patient, and Viola had some transition with personnel. Uh, but I think that uh, with Trevor joining the team, we are very happy. The staff here, um, we were part of the, uh, let's say, the selection process. You know, we saw that there were a lot of candidates that came forward. Uh, and then uh, finally, uh, we they were able to extend the offer to Trevor. Uh, but I just want to let you guys know that also the staff is happy with uh, the changes that Viola uh, did here at the plant with, related to personnel that we definitely support. Uh, we are excited that Ross uh, passed his exam and also we're uh, welcoming uh, Trevor to our team. Thank you. And I don't, I don't think there's any rule against having two class fours, is there? No, we had two in Danbury at the time, so. So keep going, Ross. I'm on <laughs> it. I'm on it. I'm on it. All right. Anything Thank else you, on everyone. that? Anybody else have anything else on uh, introduction to Trevor Seaprock? Hearing none. Uh, it is 435. We'll move on to item number four. Five, authorize the city of Norwalk purchasing agent to authorize a sole purchase order to Kovac Construction Corporation for immediate emergency response services related to the August 18th, 2024 storm event for an amount not to exceed $300,000 or motion to approve the city purchasing agent to authorize. Ms. Smith gets that. Any comment from staff, um, introduction, presentation, et cetera? Yes, um, we're going to talk about Killer Brook in multiple uh, locations at tonight's agenda. But first, uh, in regard to COVAX. So Sunday night, August 18th, 2024, city of Norwalk experienced a uh, major storm event. Uh, we averaged anywhere from four to seven inches in the city. And unfortunately, uh, in the afternoon, evening, 
we lost the Killer Brook pump station. And Viola will talk a little bit uh, under the contract ops report about their experience and uh, action that they took. Uh, but specifically what I can say is um, the team, Veolia team, the city, uh, WPCA, DPW, uh, we reached out to multiple vendors. We got folks coming. Uh, Veolia got Godwin to come that night. Uh, I was engaged with Wright Pierce and Kovacs, and they provided emergency services. Uh, because when I say we lost the station, the dry well, which is about 30 feet deep underground, completely filled with stormwater runoff. And unfortunately, while it filled up, it hit the electrical components that were uh, maintaining sewage operations and burn out the whole uh, pump station. So this, this was uh, reminiscent of uh, Hurricane Sandy when we lost the Salmon Street pump station. And immediately, uh, Viola notified the city staff and they took action. Uh, it, it was a very impressive um, process uh, with the team, everybody getting together, making phone calls. Uh, like I said, Kovacs answered the phone on a Sunday night uh, they were there next morning to help the team. And uh, like I said, we'll talk a little bit more about this later, but they are, they've they been providing emergency services um, for the WPCA and Veolia team. Any questions of staff? So what is the uh, 300,000 for? Is that the entire, it seems like not, not a lot of money. Well, it's, it is a lot of money, obviously. But from what uh, you just explained, it seems like uh, that's a pretty massive uh, uh, incident and $300,000 is gonna cover the replacement of that? We believe so. Um, it was just, to be honest, it was just a number that we thought uh, made sense. Um, we do, we are, we'll talk about this later too. We are out to uh, negotiating or we out to emergency procurement with two contractors for uh, replacement of the, the killer broke pump station. So we're hoping, um, you know, in the, in the coming weeks to have a new, either Kovacs or, or their uh, CH Nickerson, the two companies that we reach out to, to, um, to enter into an emergency contract with one of them to build a new station. Uh, Kovacs right now has been providing on um, support on site with Veolia and the, the temporary bypass from Godwin. Um, they're providing uh, temporary power to the station and uh, they put up fencing, temporary fencing, just to secure the site uh, to make it safe. Um, we're also, they're shopping around because right now we have three pumps, uh, two sixes and an eight inch pump that are operating on diesel. And we're looking to get uh, power to the site so we can have two pumps on power and then the diesel backup. So all that is happening over, um, since the, since August 18th and probably over the next few weeks. So we believe the 300,000 will is more than enough to cover their expenses, but at least we wanted to to open up um, the the emergency uh, PO number. Any other questions? Chris? Godwin Godwin pumps is also included in the 300,000. That's a rent. That's actually the, the initial bypass is under the Veolia contract. So they're going to be putting an invoice together to the city for all their time in the, the first 48 hours um, of mobilizing. Uh, Godwin mobilized. Um, I believe the Godwin rental right now is about $30,000 a month um, based on preliminary invoicing that we're seeing. Uh, this may be a FEMA event. FEMA has already been to the site to inspect. So we are going to submit everything to FEMA for consideration. So in other words, there are probably, there, there are, we know for sure there are other costs related just to the, to keep the pump running on the bypass as of now. Uh, but what we don't have with COVAX is the contract to allow us to continue paying them on the work that they are providing. So that's the $300,000. Uh, what Viola is providing, we already have kind of pretty much through our contract with them. Correct. Anybody else? Uh, so how much in, how much more are we incurring now? It's, it's, it's about 30000 a month. For the pumps. Well, just just plus as of now we have the diesel cost. So as of now, right. we're assuming be, uh, around twenty five thousand dollars 
right? Uh, we are expecting on top of it uh, just to maintain what we have now. Um, we're trying, that's why we're looking to see if we can get a electrical pumps there. We know that will significant change the monthly cost of it. Uh, and our goal is really to break ground ASAP. So the sooner we start the project, the sooner we'll finish because this bypass now will have to stay until the completion of the new pump station. So it is a long-term emergency situation now. So that's what we're trying to minimize uh, all the costs that we have now. We're looking at other alternatives. So how much longer, what's the estimated, uh, you know, uh, run of this uh, fix then? Two how years. soon? Would, how long? Two years, probably. Two years? Potentially. So 20,000, 25,000 a month for two years? Well, there's a lot of things um, with the electric. Plus, plus, plus. <laughs> we would look to possibly purchase the pump. So that way the city would own the pumps right. and not have to pay the rental fee. It would just be the electrical fee. And then eventually we'll use that as a backup to something else in the future. Then we don't have the diesel cost. It will go back to power. Uh, so yeah, unfortunately it is a cost that now we don't, we don't have another option, unfortunately. You know, but the good mm -hmm. the good thing about it, if there is something good, is that um, because it this failure was triggered by a major storm event, we are uh, trying to see if we can secure FEMA funds for it. Um, so we're keeping track of all these expenses. We're already met with them. Mm -hmm. They are aware it is, and so there is a chance that all these costs may be may be reimbursed. Well, in the future. Correct. And at the same time, we put a claim into the city's uh, KERMA for insurance purposes as well. Do we have any oh, other sure. stations that are might be at risk of having the same issues? No, this, this was our highest risk, Mr. Guineri, and we knew about it. Uh, one of the reasons that this pump station hasn't been replaced was because we couldn't get into an agreement with Eversource about the easement. So we have we have pretty much the designs ready and we even got the permits already last year to build it, but we couldn't finalize uh, the agreement with Eversource. Um, so now with that, we are, uh, and we'll, we are very close to now uh, finalize this easement that we're hoping to happen in the next couple of weeks. And um, also the way that we're gonna procure this uh, new pump station, it will be a little bit different because it's an emergency. So we already are talking to some contractors to see how soon we can start and finish the project. Okay. Thank you. What was the problem with with uh, Eversource and getting the easements? Um, I don't. I will not say it, it is a problem. I think that as every single agreement between, uh, if you go with a corporate, they have their concerns um, about the use of their land. You know, it is a permanent easement. Uh, I think that the same way that we had our uh, concerns when they came to us for some easements in our parcel, I think that that's what it is. Um, so there is a lot of, uh, they are concerned about some liability. They want to know how the construction would happen. And unfortunately, uh, it it does take a long time. But um, I have to say that we are almost there now. Mm -hmm. uh, we really got a lot of, improve right to yeah. to it this past two weeks yeah. plus, plus from the time when we first engaged them you know we went through covid so there's been a lot of challenges of, over the years and then you know their future plans for the property so where we're where we're asking for um the new site to be and what their future plans are so this goes back quite a ways Yes, yep. but all projects always take take some time, right? Um, when we start right. planning first, what is the concept? What are we going to do? Funding, figure it out how we'll make it happen. 
So this conversation with Eversource has been on the table for a long time, right? They have to tell us if they're going to allow us to uh, take the easement on a certain size of the parcel before we even start drawing what we want to do that. So that, that conversation has been on and off for a long, long time. Um, after that, you know, that there was all this, let's say, mutual agreement that we could do it. Now we have to work the details. And that's when we have legal from both sides uh, trying to make sure that is a fair deal for both of us. Uh, we are not, this easement, we are, we don't, we are not paying ever source for the easement, right? There is no cost associated to the city. Uh, but at the same time, there is a lot of restrictions. And that's why we takes a lot of time this negotiation because we're trying to find what is the common ground, what is fair for them, but also what is our need. And that's where it's taking longer. But we're almost there, believe me, you yes. have no idea, almost there. <laughs> But in the meantime, we're we're incurring, you know, had that easement been put in place and we would have gotten to work on this, we wouldn't have this issue in the first place. That's correct. And we remind them every single meeting. <laughs> I'll bet you do. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, I'll just add that... Um, I think it's almost heroic how you guys got your arms around this so quickly and stopped the bypass under extreme adverse conditions and um, mobilized diesel pumps to take away. You lost a whole major pump station adjacent to a river that I assume breached its bank. That's how it filled up the 30 foot hole. It's um it's miraculous that that you guys got your arms around this as quickly as you did, within twenty two hours. Twenty two hours. And two hours. and another thing that I think that it's important that everyone needs to remember that was a major storm where we actually didn't get as much as part of the rest of the state, so everyone at that day was in need of something. So you know it's not only that if it was just one only act that happened that day is much easier, right? We need the generators, we need the pumps, but we are not the only ones that need it. You know, you guys remember the images from that day throughout the state. So I think that that makes the event even like uh, the accomplishment even bigger, I would say. that That's an excellent point. Um, the rest of the state or other portions of the state experienced biblical flooding. Um, roads just disappearing and, and i mean we've all seen the videos it, we were very lucky in that regard yeah. so it could have been much much worse that's another another mm -hmm. good point any any more questions staff or comments questions okay um item number six it is 549 is there a motion to go into executive session Mm -hmm. oh, Mr. Sorry, uh, Mr. Chairman, I don't think you approve the the this the the item. Oh, I'm sorry, thank you. We didn't get a vote for that. We were so busy patting each other on the back. Sorry. Um, is there a motion? Uh, no, we already made the motion. All in favor? Aye. Bovio, Stefan, Ignary, Freyer, Manella, Smith passes unanimously. Thank you. It's now five fifty. Is there a motion to go into executive session? And that was Mr. Ignari. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. Well, we also find Ignari, Freyer, Manelli, and uh, Smith. So I'll see you on the other side. Okay. We have just left executive session at 6.35 p.m. No action was taken. During executive session, we resume the regular meeting at 6.35 p.m. and um, take up item number seven with contract operation reports. Ralph? Or Violia? Violia, Violia, I'm sorry. Ross? Did we lose Ross, it looks like? 
Yeah, it looks like we did. Trevor, mm -hmm. would you be able to, or Dave to do the Veolia monthly report? Unfortunately, I don't have a copy. I don't know if Trevor does. Trevor's there. Wing it. <laughs> 630. The board's going to get restless. Yeah, let Trevor. me just reach, let me just reach out to Trevor or Ross. All right. I have it in front of me now. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, okay. So we uh, just briefly need to touch on July and August. So in July, we um, the collections team for Veolia completed 3.26 miles of TV inspection, cleaned 4.43 miles of sewer lines, did 107 manhole inspections, and 3.53 miles of SL RAT and no, no hot list cleaning in the month of July. Um, the IPP inspection program conducted 17 uh, inspections. We completed the scum tank project, which has been showing um, a lot of benefits at the facility. Um, and we cleaned out outfall 001. And in July, we had one wet weather event, which seems minor compared to the, the event we had uh, in August, but on July 17th, um, Alfall 2 activated for two hours and 10 minutes and discharged just under half a million gallons um, over the duration of the event. Um, we completed all the necessary sampling and analysis in accordance with the permit. Um, let's see here. Uh, for regulatory, we submitted a few um, few reporting requirements in our permit that are less frequent, our bi-monthly sludge and our chronic toxicity. And all of our reports were inputted for July. And I would just like to flip over to August to cover that. Okay. And then moving on to August, um, we our collections team completed 0.3 miles of TV inspection, cleaned 2.99 miles of the sewer line, only eight manhole inspections, but we completed 11.18 miles of SL RAT. Um, so we had a focus there this month. And IPP inspection program conducted another 32 inspections. Um, we have upgraded the final settling tank sprayers to help break down any anything that floats to the surface on those, and that's been working well. And then we had one wet weather event in August, which was um, the August 18th severe rainfall event that we had occur. Um, so during that event, outfall two activated for nine hours and 27 minutes and discharged 9.1 million gallons. Um, the facility reached a peak flow of, of just about 70 million gallons coming in during that time. Um, and we completed all of our, um, sampling and analysis per the permit. Um, and then of course we had the one SSO event with the killer brook pump station failure. Um, the Veolia team along with the WPCA were on site through the evening and well into the end of the next day, getting, you know, getting the system situation under control and getting the bypass pumping up and running and stabilized. And then our team has been spending extra care to make sure that everything remains functional out there while we begin the, to look into a longer term bypass setup as we spoke about earlier. Um, is there anything else? I don't believe I have th anything else unless there are questions. Any questions for the oil? Hey, Trevor, I'm, I'm going to add, we're going to share a screen. We're going to show a couple photos of Kilo Brook. So uh, the oil was on site before I was able to get there. But when I got to the site, this is what the site looked like. <clears throat> and again, it's a below grade pump station. And the, the roof that you see, that's where the generator, that's the hatch where the generator is. And the, that hatch would leak occasionally with rain. So that's why it has a roof there. But the wet well and the dry well access 
patches are completely under under the flooded site. There was no dry well that day. There was no, no dry <laughs> well. No, it was completely filled. Like I, like I mentioned, it's about 28 feet below grade. It was full all the way to the top. So every piece of electrical equipment was underwater and it was hot when the water hit it. So it actually blew the transformers, um, or sorry, it blew the switches on the transformers on the pole, on the Eversource pole adjacent to the site. So that's what the site looked like. Within 22 hours, uh, the, you know, the, the team had the Godwin pumps installed and conveying sewage back into the system. Uh, here's a picture of the two eight-inch pumps and the six-inch pump that's connected currently. Uh, kudos to the Veolia team. It just, it was amazing. I mean, again, 22 hours after losing a critical pump station. Any questions on this? No, no questions for me. I just wanted to add briefly, I, I live in Oxford and we got 16 plus inches of rain. So I can attest to the damage that was done. There's many areas that are still closed out here. So I'm just super proud of the team and we all did, did great, I believe. We have the report section next. Yep. yep. Um, just going back. Number to, eight. Sorry, included under the Veolia section, we have the contract year five inflation adjustment letters. So um, annually, Veolia's contract uh, is inflated by by the CPI and ECI. So for this coming, well, this contract year five, it was three point seven percent was the increase to their their contract operations contract. So we have letters from Veolia and from WPCA agreeing to the number. And lastly, under major repair and replacement, uh, uh, Veolia had asked if they can enhance some of the facility lighting, uh, specifically at night when the, uh, the lone person walks around, uh, just requested some additional lighting in a couple of critical spots. So um, the WPCA said, yeah, no problem. Now I'll finish out the Veolia report. No questions on Veolia? Let's move to number eight. Yep, we have section eight reports, the fiscal year 23-24 and fiscal year 24-25 revenues and expenditures munis report. And then we have copies of that included. The next we have item B, which is update on the purchase of the electrical vehicles. Oh we yeah. go. So um the reason why we put this back, I just want to let the board know that we ended up not uh, using any of the WPC money to buy any of the electrical cars. Uh, there was a change. What happened was, uh, let me just explain a little bit about uh, what is the program. So the city of Norwalk, we have kind of a fleet program uh, that we ended up buying some of the cars through the fleet uh, and all the departments ended up using. Um, so even though in the past some money, there were some purchases from WPCA, um, it is go really through this pool of cars. Um, this time, because we're, we are really trying to be the greenest city in Connecticut, so now all the time that we purchase new vehicles, we have to try to go either all electric or hybrid. So... We were considering uh, buying the electrical cars uh, to the WPCA. And then when we look at all the approved capital budget that we have starting on the fiscal year, July 1st, um, the administration decided to actually uh, inquire, uh, buy the new cars, that's brand new cars that we got that were electrical cars uh, through the regular uh, fleet account. So this way it can be used and can be tested by different staff until we see how we're gonna expand the program. So I just want, I just want to come back here say that although you guys have already uh, give us the proof to buy two electrical cars, we haven't bought any cars, so there we haven't touched the money from the board yet. We do not know what we're gonna do next, though. We may 
go back and buy the cars, but we're going to come back and, and again uh, let you guys know. Wow. Thanks. We have item C, discussion on WPC engineering projects. First one is Kilo Brook, pump station replacement. Yep. And just to add, uh, following that August 18th event, uh, we signed a task order with Wright Pierce to expedite the procurement for construction. And there's a copy of the task order in the amount of $50,000. And I was to uh, submit the RFPs to the two contractors and uh, expedite the uh, submittal review process with those contractors uh, for critical pieces of equipment that need to be purchased. We have item two, which is the Beacon Street Sanitary Sewer Project. We signed a task order with Brad and Colbo for the design of replacement of approximately 1,500 linear feet of sanitary sewer on Beacon Street from Sunset Hill to Willow. We are upsizing the ex existing 15-inch clay pipe to 24-inch to improve the capacity in that area and mitigate sanitary sewer flows. We're looking to complete the design by early next year and bid the project in February. DPW is actually doing a sidewalk project right now in that area. So as part of that work, we're gonna replace portions of the sanitary sewer laterals, of I guess private laterals for people's homes at nine locations that, that are in the vicinity of that replacement that we're expecting next year for the, um, for the sanitary sewer line to make sure that those laterals aren't compromised and, and that we don't have to um, excavate the new sidewalk early next year. So just, um, Ahead of that project, we're doing that work now so that we'd be able to move forward with that um, sanitary sewer replacement next year. We have the catch base and disconnect program, item three. We received the final um, design report from Brown and Caldwell. Prior to moving forward with the next phase, we're going to be scheduled a meeting with DPW to discuss um, which projects DPW Engineering is going to take over, which projects WPCA will we'll move forward with. Um, at this point, uh, DPW has is moved forward, moving forward with disconnecting cash basins at five locations. One of the locations on Snippin Street has recently been disconnected. And we're going to meet uh, mid to late October yep. with the engineering department. Hubble's Lane Relief Sewer. We're going to be receiving the 90% of design drawings from Robin Caldwell on October 4th. That we're going to be you know, reviewing the design and also reviewing the DPW as well. We have discussion on WPCA construction projects, the Samus and Bell Island sewer shed rehab project. We have a table that shows the progress we have with that project. So I'll share, I'll share my screen now. So we have a table here of the work. So the total project, we had um, just under 63,000 linear feet of lining completed, right around 49,000 linear feet has been completed, which is a great progress. So we're 78% 70, complete with the project. And moving forward, I guess, we're moving forward well, and um, we'll be completed next year with this project. So. We've had good progress there. So I'll stop, stop sharing my screen. And the um, sewer use appeals, we're at 43,321 on the appeals. Okay, is there, is there anybody, uh, anybody have any comments, questions on anything contained on the agenda or not on the agenda? Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. By Mr. Ignari, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Smith, Ostafine, Freyer, Manella, Bovi, thanks for hanging in there, everybody. It's 6 50 and the meeting is over. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night.